I always hope that artists walk away feeling fulfilled, feeling special, like their concerns and that their ideas were honored and heard. The work that I do as an engineer is artistic because it's artistic for the artists that I'm working with. These are not my songs. They're the artist's songs. So I'm Brad Smalling, and we're at Evergreen Studio in Evergreen, Colorado, which is just about 45 minutes outside of Denver. Our location absolutely has an impact on artists. We're on four and a half wooded acres. The space just lends itself to creativity. Like when you're here yet, you're really in it. And that allows the artist to focus on the music, which is why we're here. It's the important thing. As far as the work we do here, we do a lot of tracking. We do a lot of mixing and we do a lot of mastering. We also aren't a genre specific studio. So we're not doing the exact same thing every day. We might work with a jam band. We might work with a goth band. We might work with a punk band. We might be doing mix consultation for an EDM artist. We might be mastering jazz or mixing classical. I was first introduced to Atmos at NAMM. There hasn't been one engineer, artist, producer that has heard Atmos that didn't say, how do I do this at home? How do I do this on my next record? How do we do this on the record that we're currently working on? And I remember the first day that I sat in here, it was just me and I hit play and it was Rocky Man. And I about fell out of my chair. And since then, we've had artists that sit here and listen to a Rocket Man or maybe an EDM track or like, like all, whatever they're into. But usually the Rocket Man track has driven artists to tears. We've had them just absolutely break down at the console when the backing vocals come in and just hug you. They just kind of break down. I thought our previous monitors were doing a great job when really I think it was the room. But we were missing some low end information that I didn't realize was there. To the point when I first heard the Trio 11s, I thought maybe they were bass heavy. But what I realized is that's not true. That we weren't actually getting all the information we needed. And we hit play and we were absolutely blown away. They, they just floored me. Absolutely floored me. The, so much clarity, the low end. I, I, we were hearing stuff in mixes that I hadn't heard or hadn't been brought to light. Pulling up some of my older mixes and listening on those trios was like, I kind of wanted to just go back and back mix my whole, like everything, my whole body of work that I've been a part of. I just wanted to suddenly, they revealed a lot. From that point on, I didn't question the speakers at all. I just trusted them. A lot of this journey to get to this point with Atmos and even for Evergroove have been trusting our gut and taking leaps of faith. And that is not led us astray. When we started Evergroove, we had a vision. And now with Atmos, that vision has completely changed. We know we're going to get even busier. There's, there's some stuff happening that is so exciting around the format that we wouldn't have had access to without taking that leap of faith. You know, people talk about, oh, has it really opened doors? It hasn't opened doors, it's kicked down walls. 